So we're back up on the bench today with this informer terminal and we're going to look at replacing this vertical driver device and hopefully these match UPC 1031H2 so that looks good these look actually to be identical See UPC 1032H2 made in Japan, of course, NEC devices. So I'm hopeful that this may uh, be the fix. Let's see if I can break these screws loose on this little heat sink. Somewhat orientation correct here. I don't know if there's any very small amount of heat sink compound on the back of the device we're removing. I will clean off what I can from here. five times more than I need. And get him back in place, get the screws started. This is from the bottom of the board. Uh, the white band goes towards the yoke connector. And this is, of course, how I remember this going in as that orientation. But I'm going to replace that capacitor first. It'll be a little easier to get at him. And we determined earlier this cap seemed bad. It's a little bit funny looking 16 volt 47 microfarad. Need to take out the replacement 47 microfarad. This one is close enough, there should be. that he is 47 microfarad 25 volt so we're a little overrated which is fine as long as the voltage is higher we're good he's gonna sit down in here again this board's pretty clumsy to work on with the wires hanging everywhere Everything's in the way here as it always is.
be careful here. I guess I could honestly could have pulled the connector off the neck of the tube. This wouldn't be quite so clumsy. Maybe there's just not a lot of room. This probably would have been a good thing to do initially. It actually gives me a little bit more working room. That would have probably been smart up front. Again, the white band goes towards the yoke connector here. I just need to tack this in place. If I can get some solder on the end of the pencil here long enough to just tack him in place. wants to touch that capacitor. He looks pretty straight. Retouch up the other end that I used to just tack him in place. solder there. Oops, dropped the soldering pencil. And again the white band is towards the yoke connector. Go ahead and walk through that and solder up the other joints. to work in here. I need to be careful not to drip solder down the board. There's just way too much solder on that connection. of the cap I put in is correct. Yeah. Put on the better glasses here so I can get a better look at that. And that does look okay. I'm just going to trim off the excess lead. Inspecting all the solder joints that I have touched and putting devices in and out. All the semiconductors are pulled off and tested. I want to make sure I haven't missed a solder joint. Green wire is down in that corner. The connector. 
character is keyed. ground there wherever the lead went for it this is really clumsy to work in where's that extra ground lead because there's one there labeled test point one. We wouldn't want to ground that accidentally. And of course the yoke comes up to here. I don't remember there being anything connected on here. I may have to go look at the photos. for whatever reason wraps up around the top of the tube and then back down to this side over here and that board finds its way in here. Should be keyed. Only goes one way on the neck of the CRT. Uh, getting really clumsy to work inside of. yoke and it is keyed by a missing wire and a missing pin. It catches up in there. See, it's rather clumsy how they put this all together. I've got four of these guys. Slaters do here. You know, when that's actually a ground tie point. Uh, 
Uh, shoot, I'm going to have to go look at some photos to remember where the, the nylon washers go between the board and the chassis, which doesn't make a lot of sense to me. At the same time, by putting the nylon washer over there, we really don't anchor that ground down. I see everything about this construction is a little bit weird. Just not remember whether the really just not remembering, and I don't think there's any witness marks to be seen. Actually, there is witness marks. Interesting. Now I'm going to go dig up the photos and I'll go from there. So I took a look at the photos and the, ni the little nylon washers really were on the outside here over the top of the board so I'll put it back together that way. This is a good reminder of why you take pictures uh, from every angle. Lots and lots of pictures. Uh, before you tear something down because it gives you a good reference. It's been a couple weeks since I've been inside of the unit and I can't trust you know an old man's memory. So the photos are obviously really useful. Uh, it also gives me uh, some good pictures inside especially for the uh, high voltage lead to the CRT to see that it was routed up over the top of the CRT kind of the way I've got it in place now actually it, it is the same way I've got it in place now so again that's a good sign you know I'm hopeful at this point wow this is really being stubborn it's hard to get it to sit flat in there and I think I just lost one of the nylon washers I'll have to dig around for it, but you know, lots and lots of photos. Uh, shoot, I wonder where that nylon washer went. If I don't find it, I'm sure I've got another one I can use uh, in a hardware bin someplace. I can see where it actually went. Did it fall down inside? Yeah. I've expected those to fall out at some point, and they just did. The uh, key latches on the outside of the latches, those drop down into a couple of slots here. And no surprise, they just fell out. Of course, the washer didn't fall out. Let me look here and see if I can see where it fell to. And of course it can't. I don't see it laying on the floor. There it is. Okay, it's back. Oh no, that's a huh, metal washer about the same size. Always kind of random stuff on the floor. Well, oh, shoot. You know drop something but always ends up at the most inconvenient location possible and that seems to be true with this and let me 
go look in some parts bins for something equivalent. small sorry I know I'm doing this off camera why uh, they isolated those the way they did is kind of a mystery but they did See the uh, screws and washers are actually rather large. I'm going to swap out the washer on these two or these two screws just because the washer I put on the back of this isn't quite as large. Assembly's rather clumsy. Uh, and the reason we pulled this entire side off was to get in here to the high voltage lead for the CRT, just because it's in such a clumsy place to get to. Let's see if I can get it to uh, clip back down in, and it's almost a blind spot to work in. It's deep enough in here trying to get this on camera would be really difficult. Well, I felt one side snap down in. There we go. Okay, that's clipped in. Take a look at the board from on top up here. Wires on, ground wire. I'm not sure I like how that's routed. No, that's okay. Yoke wire. The uh, blue green is on. Orientation's correct. The uh, CRT, uh, the connector to the back of the CRT neck, is of course keyed. So it should be good. down here I should have done this earlier hopefully this doesn't blow up the uh, video Take a peek at the camera it's not too horrible really we move on now to logic card because they route now those are color coded exactly the same and I didn't label them that's a shame now one of them's longer than the other 
so it has to go to the bottom. The ribbon cable goes on this guy here. I know you were on those four pins. I just looked at the photos of this as well. gold contacts, gold pins, which is kind of nice. And you sit in here. And of course the keyboard was on down here and it's keyed. So it can only go on one orientation. Side the ribbon cable goes on. Uh, I apologize, so much of this is off camera. I'm not off a pin in any direction. downstairs crying so for the last year plus in a lot of video you've heard uh, my dog Rosie it was her uh, illness slowly escalated with the coughing and uh, part of why I haven't been doing a lot of video recently is she took a turn for the worst after Christmas and I eventually had to put her down and it's been very difficult for me uh, let's see there were oh and I can hear my new puppy down there crying so you go on this way with the nuts on the posts. Uh, as I said, it's been very difficult. I become very attached to my dogs. Uh, ultimately, putting her down was the right answer, as much as I hate to say that. one there. See, there's extra holes in this PCB that, that don't go into uh, posts on the back of the board. Or the back of the, the chassis. So those guys all go there. The modem board. really rather interesting to get into place. Should go there. screw in here first we're just testing fit and alignment screw here here and I'll tilt it up a bit I don't know if the camera's gonna focus on what I'm doing here but If 
five screws and there was five similar screws or identical screws that came out of the little collection of hardware there are no threaded inserts below any of those and there really aren't the bottom half of that card just really floats there seats on like that there are four nuts here which hold the modem card in place if I can get them to start so anyhow I, as I was saying I ended up having to put Rosie down after a little over a year of, of illness uh, between the collapsing trachea, the congestive heart failure, uh, and then she had a really bad medical event shortly after Christmas that was very difficult on her and honestly on me, just because I get very attached. That's not the right nut driver. So let's dig out a nut driver. It'll work. No, nope. there's Anna barking down there. Not big enough. That's the largest amount. It looks like the quarter inch, which is what's confusing to me. Oh, Anna. the neighbor's cat off the back of the deck anyhow uh, as I get back to my little story uh, a couple weeks three weeks after uh, I had to deal with Rosie there was an elderly dog 15 years old little male Shih Tzu uh, Chihuahua mix that needed a home uh, and it's kind of a long tragic story but he's now with me he's a great little guy and you probably can't hear it but that's who's down there whining because he wants to be up here with me and I don't let the dogs in the lab so Missing the screw. Ah, oh, it's still in the latch. These go with these, as I remember those mounted the back of the uh, cabinet on. I hope I'm not missing a screw here. I may have to go tear down or. or review the teardown video where I pulled the screws out to see if I've missed one. I don't think I have. Boards back in. High voltage is seated and tight. Routed the same way it was before. Ribbon cable orientation is correct. The length of these really dictated which one went where. He was on the bottom four pins. Lots of other connectors on there that just don't go to anything. Looks to me like DC Power is brought up to this card and then passed through a wiring bundle or th through this bundle of the card over here. It's, it, again, it's an interesting construction technique. question becomes, am I confident enough to apply power? There's nothing
something hanging loose in there. Nothing that looks out of place. I'd be very happy if this guy just woke up and worked at this point. Uh, yeah, he's quickly become my little buddy down there. So power is off. And I guess really at this point it's just going to be kind of cross my fingers. Well, I heard what seemed to be high voltage come up. And same issue. So we still don't have vertical drive. Oh, what is wrong with this vertical section? Now we haven't made things worse. That's a good sign. Lack of schematic for this is making this really a difficult repair. Uh, that really disappoints me. Uh, you know, the owner did report it was working, and then just boom, vertical went out and it was done. And they say I've been assuming semiconductor capacitor kind of issue without being able to get a schematic and get in there and trace through the vertical. Of course, I've had high voltage on this now. The CRT did light up. It's a little bit more dangerous. Well, there is. Potentially a model number on the CRT Clinton Taiwan Corp. That may be the next bet is to see if I can actually find a at least a manual for the monitor. Uh, I have serious doubts about being able to find it. It is something I didn't look for before. So, I really think that's going to be my next bet. So, I haven't made it worse, haven't made it better. I've been through all the semiconductors, including that uh, vertical drive I see we replaced, this guy. Could still be a cap around that causing the issue. I may have to just pull the board and recap the entire board. Um, kind of hesitant to do that. Anyhow, I'm going to wrap this segment up here. Get some photos of that tag. See if maybe I can find a service manual for it. Anyhow, I guess that'll wrap up what I think is the third video in the attempted repair of this guy. Uh, we'll pick it up in video four.